Persist on Trunks Arteriosus is a cyanotic congenital heart disease, or a cardiac malformation. In cardiac embryology, the Trunks Arteriosus is the outflow tract of the primitive heart with its four dilatations. We have the sinus venosus, the primitive atrium, the primitive ventricle, the bulbous cordis, and the Trunks Arteriosus. The structure derived from neural crest cells that's going to give rise to the aorta and the pulmonary trunk and the semilunar valves. However, for the primitive heart to form the two circulations we have as adults, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation, it needs to be divided between right and left hearts, which for the trunk arteriosus means being septated into the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is supposed to carry deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, whereas the aorta is supposed to carry oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the systemic circulation. In order to divide the trunk's arteriosus into these two structures, neural crest cells migrate to the conotrunk and bulbar ridges of their trunk's arteriosus and grow the aortical pulmonary septum, a spiral structure that starts dividing outflow from the left ventricle and the right ventricle around the eighth gestational week. Persistent trunk arteriosus is when the aforementioned structure fails to divide the pulmonary trunk and the aorta due to a lack or incomplete formation of the aortic pulmonary septum. As a consequence, just as in the primitive heart, we get a single large vessel arising from both ventricles that only downward separates into the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. This is a problem because oxygenated blood coming from the left ventricle and deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle have to flow through the same vessel causing them to mix along the trajectory. We lead to a partially oxygenated blood going to both the systemic and pulmonary circulations. Since the blood leaving for the systemic circulation is only partially oxygenated, since it has mixed with the deoxygenated blood coming from the right ventricle, the patient will present some degree of hypoxemia, which is likely to present a cyanosis. Therefore, persistent troncus arteriosus is classified as a cyanotic congenital heart disease. Amongst the cyanotic congenital heart disease, it's classified as a cyanotic disease with increased pulmonary blood flow. That's because since both the right ventricle and the larger and stronger left ventricle are pumping blood into the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries will be subjected to a pressure higher than normal for the right heart, which will be more compatible with what we'd expect from the aortic pressure. Therefore, given the higher pressure in the pulmonary arteries, we will have increased blood flow. Since both the aortic pulmonary septum and the continuous structure inferior to it, the membranous portion of the interventricular septum are of neurocrat origin, persistent drug arteriosus will almost invariably be associated with a ventricular septal defect. If the neural crest cells fail to form the aortic pulmonary septum, they are unlikely to have been successful in forming the membranous portion of the interventricular septum. Therefore, we will have only the muscular portion. Anatomically, in the presence of trunks arteriosus, the pulmonary arteries can arise either directly from the trunks arteriosus which is the same structure that will give rise to the aorta, or from a distal pulmonary trunk division of the trunk arteriosus. There is usually a single semilunar valve called the truncal valve that often includes dysplastic or supranumerary leaflets. Other abnormalities, such as in the coronary arteries, are also common. The condition can happen sporadically or in association with 22Q11 deletion syndromes, such as the George syndrome and velocardiofacial syndrome. Its incidence is thought to be between 6 and 8 
per thousand live births. Mortality is almost 100% in the first year of age without surgical intervention. However, with surgery to reconstruct the right ventricular outflow tract, prognosis is generally good, although it usually entails reoperations as the child grows and needs to have the conduit replaced. The condition can be identified first on obstetric Doppler ultrasound, but is usually detected in the early neonatal period. Finally, its differential diagnosis include mostly other synoid congenital heart diseases, such as detransposition of the great arteries or total anomalous pulmonary venous return. If you want to contrast with, with these other diseases, make sure to click the links on the screen. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Please bear in mind that this is not meant as medical advice, only as a review. If you believe you or someone you know may have trunkus arteriosus, please seek your physician. If you believe one of our patients may have trunkus arteriosus, please check the latest protocols. I hope this proves is useful. Thank you once more for choosing to spend your time with me, and I hope to see you on the next video.